This is a phase one study of fianlimab, which is a human lag three monoclonal antibody in com combination with semiplimab, which we're all familiar with. It's the PD-1 antibody uh, in advanced melanoma. And this is from a phase one, two study that utilized combination. But we already know that combination of lag three and anti PD one has demonstrated higher progression free survival and overall response rate in patients with untreated advanced melanoma. We've seen response rates in pretreated melanoma. Uh, so the combination here uh, is looking at high affinity IgG4 monoclonal antibodies. Uh, and is utilized in combination to help with uh, resolving, uh, removing T cell inhibition and in improving response rates. So there was an initial phase one expansion cohort and it showed a higher than 60% response rate. And we looked at these expansion cohorts in, a, uh, in advanced melanoma a, together with a confirmatory cohort. In this uh, trial, fianlimab was given 1,600 milligrams along with semiplimab 350 milligrams IV every three weeks for up to a year. And then it was up to the investigator to ask for a second year. Uh, so we looked at two cohorts uh, for anti-PD-1, PD-L1 naive patients. That's uh, an expansion cohort 6 and 15. In cohort 6, you could have been treated but without having seen a lag three or PD-1. And in 15, you were uh, naive to treatment. There's 40 patients in each cohort. We also looked at expansion cohort seven that looked at PD-1 pretreated patients. Now, uh, these patients were to be uh, metastatic melanoma, so acryl and mucos were allowed. Uh, just non-uveal. And we looked at overall response rate as the primary endpoint. Both cohorts were matched similarly. Uh, we had acryl mucosal cutaneous melanomas. There was a high incidence of uh, patients that had M1C disease, high LDH, and high uh, liver metastases. And what we saw here was that tumor response was significant in this population. It's the highest response rate we've seen in this combination or any combination for melanoma with cohort six having a 62.5% response rate uh, and cohort 15 having a 65% response rate. So cumulatively 63.8%. The disease control rate was also significant at 80%. And overall response rate was seen regardless of LDH. So high LDH had a 57% response rate, normal LDH 70%, and a 47% response rate for liver metastases. So these are the highest we've seen. There are questions about why we see this. Again, this is a phase two setting and others have presented phase three. But also what we note here is the, the LAG3 inhibitor fianlimab has been dosed at 10 times greater than the uh, other combinations with lag three. When you looked at the efficacy, 76% of patients had any level of tumor reduction. And the responses were similar to what we've seen with other combinations. They were uh, rapid, deep, and durable. When you saw patients who initially were stable get into a partial response and then a complete response. So you can have a durability of response and continued response. The progression-free survival uh, in the 80 patients was 24 uh, uh, months. And the estimated event-free probability at one year was 55%. So pretty significant data here that's helpful. And response was seen regardless of lag-3 expression. So lag-3 expression less than 1% had an overall response rate, you know, in in cohort six, where we had this data available, and it's 40 patients, an overall response rate of 40%. Lag three greater than 1% had a 74% response rate. PDL one expression greater than 1% had a 77% response rate. And then even low PDL one had a 56.8% response rate. Uh, 
So these are uh, significant in that they're the highest that we've seen in these combinations. Now, unfortunately, what we saw in cohort seven, which was the pretreated patients, that remained similar to what we've seen in previous exposures uh, for patients who had seen PD-1, PD-L1, and then come on to this combination. And our response rate here was 13.3%. 15 patients were shown. Uh, there was a <clears throat> disease control rate about 47%, but the majority of disease control was short-lived. What's important to note here is there were two patients that had a significant partial response. And for us, as we move forward, it's uh, inherent in our future to understand why these patients responded, what were their prognostic factors, and then try to utilize this in those cohorts of patients that have shown benefit. Uh, so as we're moving on now, the patients are continuing to do well. What we also saw in safety was that it was well tolerated with treatment related AEs, uh, leading to discontinuation in about 15% of patients. Uh, there were two grade five toxicities. One had a colitis. The other one had a septic shock, which was not related to therapy. It was uh, a cardiac issue uh, that was uh, related to COVID infection and not to myocarditis. What we really saw is uh, the main increase in treatment-related toxicity was uh, adrenal insufficiency in about 9% of patients. And then this, so this is a manageable toxicity. Uh, this is a uh, toxicity that uh, we are, can identify easily and is non-emergent uh, uh, for our patients. So what we saw here, again, an overall response rate uh, that is the highest in combination, seven complete responses, 44 partial responses, so 63.8%, with the median duration of response that hasn't been reached, uh, a progression-free survival at 24 months, and uh, clinical activity, even in poor prognosis subgroup, high LDH, liver metastases, uh, lag three less than 1%. So uh, what we now see is a regimen that is uh, possibly paradigm shifting. It's being looked at in a randomized study worldwide, globally, uh, of fialimab and semiplimab versus pembrolizumab that's currently accruing at many centers, including ours. So as we move forward and as you come to ESMO IO and other uh, meetings, please be on the lookout for this uh, practice changing data. Also, there are going to be uh, presentations in other subgroups, including the non-small cell lung cancer subgroup. Um, I appreciate the time and the ability to present our data, fianlimab and semiplimab, in uh, advanced melanoma.